it is so long that it may take you up to eight or even ten years to get to come up to be confident that this is my best variety that I should give farmers for production. Because now here basically we are trying to say, oh, let me see, let me combine these and see if I can get the best child. So once you collect all these seeds, normally we, we collect something like 100,000 and all these are germinated outside there. Mm. Once they are germinated, the first thing we leave them, we leave natural selection to take place. In a hundred thousand, by the time you finish, they grow up, maybe you will pick something like ten thousand. Mm -hmm. The rest will die of several things. Mm -hmm. Or you will reject them because of several reasons. Some will be sick, some will just die naturally, some will not germinate, some, uh, once they, they have even germinated, you find them with very bad roots, you know, maybe one small root, so that one you will not select it. For several reasons, you quickly come from 100,000 mm. now to something like 10,000. After taking 100, the, maybe about 10,000, now you grow them for the second round. Remember, when you germinate this, it comes out as a single vine. Just mm. a single vine, like you see this, this vine here. That's the way it is. Mm. And that means that you can't even plant a bigger space because you have limited planting material. So for the second round, it means that maybe you can plant like three plants. It, you have a chance maybe to have three plants. Mm. And now it's the three plants that now this time we evaluate and see. Of the ten, each of the ten thousands, you have three plants to look at. And you grow them in the field. You can have them in one station. You can have them in at least two stations if, if you have enough money. Mm. Because all this is money. So when uh, the... the, the, the how they are reacting to diseases, yeah? whether mm. they are susceptible to diseases or they are not. Then you harvest and look at the roots. Like in this case of our project, we are basically emphasizing the orange fresh sweet potato varieties. Mm. So basically we go there and check of all these children we selected in the first case, which of these are orange fresh? None orange, throw. Mm. However best you are, just throw. Mm. So now after that now maybe we will narrow down something like maybe let me bring it down maybe to 2000. If you are very good or you are focused on what you want you may even narrow it to 500 because you don't want to spend a lot of time carrying out all these materials that probably will not eventually be accepted. So the cycle goes on like that and as for each very every cycle you get more planting material available for you to evaluate in the next generation. Mm -hmm. Remember now for all those first preliminary evaluations, you do them in the station. But time comes and then you say, okay, now for these materials I've selected, let me first see how the farmers see them. Now you start bringing farmers on, on farm, they, on, on, rather on the station, and they see. They will say, tell you, ah, no, that one, don't even think about it. We are, the way we are looking at it, maybe, Mm, it will not give us enough planting material. They may test it while it is raw and they say, mm, it's, it's testing badly. No, they just raw. Mm. So it means that now you are involving the final consumers into the product. Mm. Then after that, you even give them the best ones they have selected to go and try on themselves. But when they go to try, you, you work with them. You don't leave them to try alone. You work with them and then uh, during the evaluation process still you are there and then you are collecting information of which of these do they, did they find uh, growing well in their fields yeah because uh, the, 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 the varieties also reject some soils yeah? they respond to some soil conditions yeah, agroecological conditions they respond they respond to all these funny things or maybe where you planted there is no disease okay. certain disease but when you take them now to that area, maybe there is a disease that they will pick. Yeah, so all these you observe. Mm -hmm. process takes such long because you have to narrow down from a bigger population of material that you picked from the crossing bed until you cautiously observe them and get something that you are confident that meets 
a big amount of the variables or a big characteristics amount of characteristics demanded by the consumers as tissue culture materials they, they, they come in the test tubes so when they come they are received in the other tissue culture lab and after that they, they are introduced in the screen house the screen house is like also a stage where you are preparing something to go to the actual field because in the lab the conditions in the lab are more different are far away from the field conditions mm -hmm. but here you are a step again towards the field conditions. Close. The, these are the sweet potato lines. I told you we have different varieties, more than 200 varieties, both land dresses and foreign. When sweet potato comes from the breeder, I'm supposed to put it here in the test tubes. You were asking me what does the word in vitro mean? Mm. This when some plant is growing under artificial conditions, this is called in vitro. This is in vitro under artificial condition. And when it's outside, it's called, it's referred to as in vivo. Out of each of these, I can get six other plants. How long has it taken? Those are four weeks. It just finds rapid multiplication that if I if out of this I can get six plants and then from these six plants, then Still, after four weeks, mm -hmm. each one plant will give me six more plants. Mm -hmm. We do virus indexing and elimination. Then from virus elimination, you do rapid multiplication because it is such a, a hard hustle that you may successfully eliminate only two plantlets. You, you end up with only two plantlets, virus free. And then you must uh, 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 multiply those ones very fast into thousands and then they are released out in the field okay. yeah such that at the end of it all our farmer is going to get clean planting material because when they develop a new variety of course it goes through the stages of um, evaluation the variety development is initially then evaluation and the release by the by the by national seed certification service so when those varieties are officially released, they are taken up by seed companies. The open pollinated varieties are given to any seed company. All seed companies are, you know, are free to multiply that seed. But for, their, for hybrids, hybrids are given on exclusivity. They want to change and give like a one hybrid like to two or three companies. But the same hybrid, but they brand differently. Okay? So that will create competition. It will also avoid the risk of losing material in case a uh, company has any problem, mis maybe mismanagement or financial constraints, and they cannot promote the variety. So we feel that would be a, a better kind of you know, mode of exclusivity. What so we get from narrow is what we would call in, term, in breeding terminology, call it breeder seed. Small quantities of seed, and the, the companies. Have many of them have production farms, seed production farms. They multiply that seed into what we call foundation seed. Okay, small quantities of breeder seed they multiply into foundation seed. Depending on the on the type of crop, uh, this can take one or two generations. You know, so you can plant several, maybe three seasons to get enough quantities of seed. But for example, if it's a hybrid, then it's one season. Okay.